hello everybody in today's video we will be learning the f1 chapter the business organization for the business and technology people so this is a very easy chapter and we will finish it within few minutes i have made this notes with reference with the kaplan study text in the following videos we will be solving the test kit as well before we begin let's see the chapter learning objectives Define business organizations and explain why they are formed. Describe common features of business organizations. First, let us do the first two business organizations. Organizations, what are they? Why do we need them? Different types. Business organizations and the reason they are formed. Organization. So, it is very difficult to define an organization because different organizations have different variety needs or objectives there are various organizations for example schools hospitals training firms etc so every organization has like a unique set of objectives and they differ from each other for example the objective of a school is to teach its students the objective of a hospital is to treat its patients so the objectives and the needs differ that is why it is very difficult to define an organization. Definition of organization by Buchanan and Helsinki. So there is a definition of the organizations which is given by Buchanan and Helsinki. So in this, they have stated the three key aspects or the similarities between all the types of organizations. Let us read the definition which is given by Buchanan and Hasizinki. Organizations are social arrangements for the controlled performance of collective goals. So what are the three key aspects we have seen? Collective goals, social arrangements and con controlled performance. So collective goals. As we know, every organization has a collective goal. So, organizations are defined by their own goals. So, then, for example, a hospital has a goal to heal its patients. A school has a goal to educate their pupils. So, the organizations are defined by their goals. So, there is a collective goal for which every single team member works to achieve the goal. Social arrangements. So social means people so or team. So someone who is working alone cannot be classified as an organization because the social arrangement aspect will be missing. Organizations are structured to allow people to work together towards a common goal. Usually larger the organization, more formal are its structures. So when the organization is larger, it will be needing more and more procedures and steps in order to have a good functioning of the organization. So social arrangement that just means that a group of people or a team of people are working towards achieving the goals of the organization. The third one is control performance. So in order to achieve any goal or any objective, we need to have a certain set of systems and procedures to ensure that the group goals are achieved. So that is easy. So revising the definition given by Bachanin and Hazizinki, there are three key aspects, collective goals, social arrangements and controlled performance. Collective goals means that the entire organization has a goal they are working towards and social arrangements, team of people and they're all working to achieve the goals and controlled performance. There are a set of procedures and systems to ensure that the group goals are achieved. One more major similarity between all kinds of organizations is taking inputs and transforming them into outputs. So what does that mean? We've seen, for example, in a school, the input are students and the outputs are graduates. In a, a manufacturing firm, inputs are the raw materials and outputs are the finished goods. In an accountancy training form, inputs are the syllabus and the inputs are the students and the outputs are a qualified accountant. So even that is a similarity. 
Moving on to the first illustration, a football team can be described as an organization because the first key aspect was collective goal. So in a football team, there are a team of members and they have a specific goal which is to score more goals than the opponent team. So yes, the key aspect one which is the collective goal has been matched. What was the second key aspect? The second key aspect was social arrangements. A football match cannot be played by one single person alone. A team or a group of people are involved. So social means people. So the social arrangement aspect has also been met. The third one is nothing but control performance. Obviously there are some rules and set of procedures in a football match, in the game of football. So even the control performance aspect has been met. So because of this matching of the three aspects, football is an organization. That was so simple. Now you can pause the video and read the answer. That is what they have explained. Test your understanding one. Which of the following would be considered to be an organization according to the definition produced by Buchanan and Hazinki? A sole trader. Is a sole trader an organization? No. Why? Because the second aspect which was the social arrangements is not met because it has only one person. A tennis club. Does it have a collective goal? Yes. To like teach people how to play tennis. Social arrangement? Yes. There is a team. There is a like coaching team. So yes. Is it having a controlled performance? Yeah. There are some sets and procedures and tasks to run the tennis club. So yes, it is an organization. A hospital? We have discussed this earlier as well that the three key aspects are met. In the case of an in a case of a hospital, how the control performance there are rules and regulations in hospital, and the con collective goal yes there is a goal to like heal all the patients, and social arrangements there is a team in the hospital which is working, so the option C is correct two and three only. Why do we need organizations? So there are three reasons why we need organizations. The first one is to share skills and knowledge. So it is very simple. Knowledge can be shared between the people in the organization. This can enable people to perform the tasks which they would have not been able to do alone. And then we have specialized. Individual workers can concentrate on a limited type of skill or activity. This allows them to build a greater level of skill and expertise and knowledge than they would have if they would have tried or attempted to be good at everything. And the third one is pool resources, which is money and time. So when a group of people come together working towards an objective, then obviously resources are pooled and time is also pooled. Synergy. So what is synergy? Synergy is 1 plus 1 is equal to 3. I'll explain that weight. Organizations can achieve more than the individuals could have on their own. So when two people come together to do the same task, then the time is saved and the same task is done in lesser time. So we'll be able to do more. So like if I do the 10 dishes, if I do 10 dishes, it's going to take me, let's say, 10 minutes. And if one of my friend, she herself does the 10 dishes, it's going to take her also 10 minutes. But if we both come together and do the same 10 dishes, it's going to take only 5 minutes. So that is what they're saying that when two people's combined effort, when they combine their effort and do a task, then more work can be done. So that is what they're saying. One person comes together with another person, then the output is of three people because we're saving so much time and more work can be done if two people come together so they're doing the work of three people 
that is what it means by 1 plus 1 is equal to 3. Test your understanding too. Daniel is organizing a social event. Which of the following would be benefits of him forming a committee to manage the planning process in the event himself? It would help to overcome his limitations by bringing on board other people with different skills to him. Yes, this is right. We just saw the pointer specialize. It would save time through the joint efforts of everyone on the committee. This is pooled resources or synergy. So true. It would help to satisfy Daniel's social needs. Yes, social arrangement. This is also true. All members of the committee would have to be skilled in all aspects of managing the social event. This is false. We saw the specialized aspect. So everyone need not try to be good at every task. They can just specialize in whatever they're doing. So 1, 2 and 3 is correct, which is option A. Different types of organization. Okay, now let's go back to the chapter objectives. Third, outline how business organizations differ. Fourth, list the industrial and commercial sectors in which business organizations operate. Five, identify the different types of business organizations. Commercial, not-for-profit, public sector, non-governmental organization, cooperatives. Okay. So, different types of organization, commercial versus not-for-profit. Let's not go into the bifurcation right now. We will just study in detail every single type and then in the end, I will clear out the flowchart. Commercial versus not-for-profit, commercial organization. Okay, so there are two types of, three types of commercial organization. The first one is sole trader. The second one is partnership and the third one is limited liability companies. So inside the limited liability company, we again have two types of company, private limited company and public limited company. So commercial organizations, there are three types, sole trader, partnership and limited liability company. And inside limited liability company, we have two types, private limited company and public limited company. Commercial, what does commercial mean? Commercial means profit seeking, profit motive. This organization, their first motive or their objective is to seek for profits. Main objective is maximizing the wealth of their owners. Three types of commercial organizations. Sole trader. So, sole trader is nothing that we've always studied this. It is owned and run by one person alone. Owner is not legally separate from the business. So, if somebody sues the business, they are suing the owner. In partnership, partnership is run by two or more individuals. Traditionally, partnerships like sole traders do not have a separate legal identity. However, in recent years, many countries have created alternative partnerships, such as limited liability partnerships in the UK, which means that the business exists as a separate legal entity. The owner's liability in a partnership is limited to the amount which they have invested in the partnership. Now we come to limited liability companies. So company has a separate legal identity to its owners. So owners of a limited liability company are called as shareholders. Owners liability is limited to the amount they have invested. Now we'll go to the types of the limited liability companies. The first one is private limited company. So they have LTD after their name and usually smaller businesses have a private limited company and private limited company they are owned by a few shareholders. Also the shares of a private limited company cannot be offered to the general public. Public limited company PLC after their name there is PLC and this is usually done for larger businesses. Millions of different shareholders are there and shares can be offered to the general public. And also public limited company is easier for the company to raise finance. So which enables the further growth. Okay. Is it clear? I hope that's clear. It's very easy. Just pause the video and read it. It's like damn easy. 
Now we have not for profit organizations. Not for profit organizations NFP or NPO do not see profitability as their main objective. Instead, they seek to satisfy the particular needs of their members or the sectors of society that they have been set up to benefit. So this is very easy. This is self-explanatory. There is nothing to explain. It says in the name itself that not for profit organizations they do not have profitability as their objective. They are just made to like satisfy the particular needs of some certain sectors of the societies. NFPs include the following government department and agencies such as HM Revenue and Customs, schools, hospitals, charities such as Red Cross, Oxfam and Doctors Without Borders clubs. So not-for-profit organizations involve these which is very self-explanatory again. The objectives of different NFPs will vary significantly. Hospitals exist to treat patients. Councils may see their mission to s- as caring for their communities. Government organizations usually exist to implement government policy. A charity may have provision of relief to victims of disasters as its main objective. Public versus private sector organizations. Okay. Even this is a very basic, basic, basic topic. What is public? Public means government. So the public sector is that part of the economy that is concerned with providing basic government services and it is controlled by the government organizations. The organizations that make up the public sector vary from country to country. But they generally include police, military, public transport, primary education, health care for the poor. Private sector organizations. The private sector consists of organizations that are run by private individuals and groups rather than the government. So businesses, charities and clubs, these are included in the private sector. They can be profit seeking or not for profit seeking as well. Now let's come to test your understanding three. So it is many schools run fundraising events such as FETE where the intention is to make a profit. This makes them profit seeking. So is this true or false? Obviously it's false because fundraising is always done for a cause, for a charity. So the statement is false. <coughs> Non-governmental organizations or NGO. A non-governmental organization is one which does not have profit as its primary goal and it is not directly linked with the government, with the national government. NGOs often promote political, social or environmental change within the countries they operate. So non-governmental organizations do not have profit as their motive and they are not linked to the national government and they promote political, social and environmental change within the countries they operate. NGOs include the Red Cross, Doctors Without Borders, Greenpeace, Amnesty International. Cooperatives Cooperatives are organizations that are owned and democratically controlled by their members. So the members are the owners of the organization in a cooperative. The people who buy their goods or services they are only the owner of the organization. Each member gets a single vote on key decisions. Unlike companies where the shareholders get one vote for each vo- each share that they possess or they own. They are organized solely to meet the needs of the member owners who usually share any profits. So cooperatives... In cooperatives, the members are the owners itself and the members are given one vote, a single vote on key decisions. Illustration 6. Cooperative In the UK, the largest example of a cooperative is the cooperative group which has over 5.5 million members and operates in diverse markets such as banking, travel and groceries. 
you just have to learn the name of the biggest cooperative in the uk which is the cooperative group which has over 5.5 million members and it f- operates in the fields of banking travel and groceries test your understanding for which of the following are usually seen as the primary objectives of the companies to maximize the wealth of the shareholders yes to protect the environment no to make a profit yes so the primary the first objective is not about the environment we've never read that we know that so 1 and 3 are correct so option d 1 and 3 only which of the following organization is most likely to be classified as a part of the public sector a charity a social club a school a public limited company it is a school because primary education or education in general is done by the public sector we have read that in the earlier as well sectors in which organizations operate a further difference between organizations is the market in which they operate there are a large number of different sectors which include agriculture production processing and packaging of food stuff mining extraction and processing of minerals finance includes banks and other companies that profit through investments and the lending of money to others retailers sale of goods produced by manufacturers to consumers service production of intangible goods and services transportation movement of goods between locations this is not an exhaustive list but it should give you some idea of the wide range of activities that support organizations now we come to summary in summary there are a number of key differences between the various types of organizations these include but are not limited to ownership objectives activities sources of funding size liability so this is like the last topic and it is very very easy ownership private sector organizations are likely to be owned by individual owners or shareholders depending on the type of organization public sector organization will be controlled by the government while cooperatives will be owned by their members easy objectives as mentioned each organization has very different goals this can range from the provision of social services for charities and public sector organization to the maximization of owners wealth for profit seeking organization self explanatory activities the activities of an organization will be designed to support its objectives this means that organizational activities are varied as the organizations themselves so activities of every organization differ we've read that in the beginning of the chapter sources of funding public sector organizations will tend to raise money from the central government private sector organizations such as companies and cooperatives will most likely have to raise funds from their owners charities are usually funded by donations let's go to the next which is size organizations vary in size from large multinational companies to sole traders consisting of only one person liability the owners of sole traders or partnerships are liable for any losses their businesses make owners of company enjoy limited liability In spite of these differences the different types of organizations often face similar issues to each other for instance most will have employees that need to be motivated many organizations will need to design strategies for the future or will need to consider what systems should be put in place to ensure the accurate recording of transactions it is these common issues that we are going to examine in more detail in the coming chapters Let's come to the test your understanding 6. Which of the following is not a benefit that organizations have over individuals? Which of them is not a benefit? They allow the sharing skills and knowledge. Yes, it is a benefit. They enable people to perform tasks they would be unable to achieve on their own. It is a benefit. They enable synergy to be achieved. 
it is also a benefit they speed up the time taken to make decisions this is not a benefit this is a disadvantage so d green watch is an independent environment charity set up to lobby the government for improved environmental regulation on business what type of organization is green watch most likely to be classed as so we know the charity are mostly private and in this case is it by the public sector no it is an independent environment charity is it a cooperative no is it a commercial is it profit seeking no it's a charity so what is it it is c non governmental which of the following statements regarding types of business is correct partnership are owned and run by one or more people this is true false it is run by two or more people private limited companies can shell, sell shares to the public which is false only public limited company can do that shareholders in company typically have limited liability this is true the owners of sole trader typically have limited liability no they have unlimited liability so the answer is c test your understanding 9 which of the following statements regarding organizations are correct companies tend to raise money from the central government false they are private most sole traders and partnerships have the aim of maximizing owners wealth this is true public sector organizations are controlled by the central government this is also true charities form part of the public sector no they form part of a private sector so 2 and 3 are correct so therefore option c test your understanding 10 here are four statements relating to the features of different types of organization this type of organization can sell its share to the public shares to the public it is nothing but public limited company right so the third one is a public limited company this type of organization is owned and run by two or more people who are legally indistinguishable from the organization itself so it is nothing but partnership which is to this type of organization is controlled by the government this is public sector organization which is the fifth one c this type of organization is owned and democratically controlled by its members this is cooperatives i've discussed it now you just have to write it down below are four types of organization write down the which of them are classified as private sector charity is a private sector we've learned that schools are public sector police forces are also done by the government limited companies are private so hence it is a and c okay so that's it we come to the end of the chapter let's quickly just revise what we've uh, studied so far it is very easy so we did the first chapter the business organization and we know that we cannot define organization as it is very difficult to define because everyone have a variety of needs and the definition of organization is given by buchanan and hazizinki in which they have given the common stuff between all organizations the three key aspects are collective goals social arrangements and controlled performance one more major similarity is that inputs are transformed into outputs and synergy oh no that's the next point hmm. and then we learned why we need organizations pick what are the advantages of the organizations they are to share skills and knowledge pool resources specialization and synergy synergy is nothing but when two people combine to do the work more work is done there are different types of organization there are various categories of how we can divide the organizations for the first bifurcation is commercial versus not for profit commercial organization are profit seeking organization there are three types of commercial organizations sole trader partnership and limited liability company inside limited liability company there are two types again private limited company and public limited company which we have done and then we have what are not for profit organizations they do not see profitability as their main objective they can 
then we have public sector organizations which is owned and controlled by the government and then we have the private sector organizations which is run by private individuals which can be both profit and not for profit and then we have ngos non-governmental organizations and then we have what are cooperatives the the owners are the members the members are the owners and the biggest cooperative in uk is the cooperative group and then we have this is not important and then we have the differences which we have just seen and that's about it so in the following videos we will be doing the test kit of this chapter as well i hope you like the video and you've learned please do give me your suggestions and if you have any questions please drop them down in the comment section below so i'll be coming up with more of these videos to cover the syllabus so i'll be linking the playlist in the description box below so please do check it out thank you